Today we're going to talk about standard form. Standard form is a special form that linear equations are in. So we know that these equations make a straight line when graphed, but they're used for distinct purposes. They're used for quickness, they're used to find x and y intercepts, and we can also use them to find slope with a little bit more information. So standard form is ax plus by equals c. Now c is your constant, and there's a couple rules that you have to remember about this formula. It's very formal, so we don't want to have any fractions in it, and we don't want any negatives in front of our a. So we have to think about that. If it has that, we've got to rectify that, and we'll talk about that. One thing that was really important, all these numbers, A, B, and C, have to be real numbers. We talked about real num numbers earlier in the year. And we cannot have A and B be zero both at the same time. What that would look like, if I put in a zero as the A times X, I get zero. And zero times Y gets me zero. Well, zero plus zero can't equal any other number but zero. So if I had zero here, plus a zero here, it would have to equal zero. Well, there would be no line. So they can't both be zero at the same time. C, even if it was two, we know that wouldn't be a true statement. It still wouldn't be a, a true line. So they cannot both be zero at the same time. Now, when we talk about trying to find X and Y intercepts, remember what they are. An X intercept is where the line that we're gonna graph hits the um, graph on the X axis. So we're talking about our X axis right here and we're talking about some point that it hits wherever it hits there. Okay, and we know wherever it hits we're going to have an X value and Y is going to be zero. Okay, when we talk about a Y intercept we're talking about the Y axis and we're talking about some point somewhere that it hits on the Y axis when we draw our maybe our line here. It always has to be a number for y, so we're going to have a number for y, but we're going to have x is going to be 0. So this knowledge helps us really use this for quickness to find x and y intercepts. And if you have two uh, points, you can easily graph a line. So let's go to our first example. We have 3x plus 4y equals 12. And I want to find my x and my y intercept. So I'm going to make a little note. I know over here my x-intercept is going to have some kind of value for x and y has got to be 0. And my y-intercept has to have 0 for my x and some kind of value for my y here. Now, if I want to find out the x-intercept, I'm, I'm looking, looking for x, so I know I want to keep x. But I know at the same time I'm looking for x, that y has to be 0. So I'm going to replace this here with a 0. Well, 4 times a 0 is 0. So this basically disappears. So what I have left is 3x is equal to 12. Now I can easily solve for x. Just a simple equation. So x is equal to 4. So now I know that my graph intersects, or my line, on my graph will intersect on the x-intercept at 4, 0. So now I can plot it. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, and we don't move anywhere at all on the 0. So here is my little x-intercept. Now I'm going to do the same thing for y. So this time if I'm looking for y, I need to know what y is, and I'm going to be able to plug in 0 for my x. So I will plug in 0 here, and 3 times 0, they're gone, and I'm left with just 4y equals 12. I then divide by 4, divide by 4, y equals 3. So when x is 0, my y is going to be 3. That's my y-intercept. So now I can plot it. 1, 2, 3, and I didn't move any at all on my um, x-axis. So I have two points. And as long as I have two points, now I can connect these two points and have my line. So now I have my line, and we now can see that it's, it's a negative slope. We could actually count and find out what those are from any two points on our line. So we know from here, and we know it's negative because it's going negative. So we know our slope is negative. And we also can count 1, 2, 3. That's the change in my vertical. 
and then over four. So it's a negative three fourths. All right, let's go to our next example. So I like to use, when I'm doing a finger method, hard to do a finger method on a video, but instead of plugging in the zero, I literally just cover up with my finger um, what I'm gonna be using um, to mark, mark zero. So when I'm looking for X, I know that my Y is gonna be zero. So I literally can just take my finger and pull, cover over the Y and of course the two. So I'm gonna use a highlighter here. So if I was using the finger method, and I'm looking for the x-intercept, I wanna know what x is, so I'm gonna cover up y. So this is all gonna disappear. It's like my big finger sticking over it. So what I have is five x equals negative 10. Well, I just divide by five, divide by five, x equals negative two. So now I know that my x-intercept is negative two, zero. My y-intercept, I'm gonna do the exact opposite, I'm going to cover up my x with my 0, and I'm going to find my y. So let me undo my little marks here. Okay, so this time I'm going to cover up my x with my finger, and I have 2y equals negative 10. So divide by 2, divide by 2, y equals, because these cancel out, y equals negative 5. So now I know that when x is zero, y is negative five, and that's my y-intercept. Now I have two points, I can easily graph them. So my x-intercept is negative two, so I'm gonna go negative two, and I don't move any on the y-axis. And then on the y-axis, I don't move any on the x-axis, and I move down five. One, two, three, four, five. So now I have my two points, and now I can make my line and connect them through, and I have my slope. From there, I could count it, find my slope, I know it's negative um, just by the way I graph them. All right, here's another one. So try this one. Try to pause and then see if you get it right. All right, so I got the x-intercept is six, zero, and the y-intercept is zero, negative two. And then I've plotted my line. So we can see we have a positive slope and we have two points. We can now find our slope if we need it. Now, standard form looks very formal, but remember we have two special types of lines. Y equals negative three. Remember that a Y equals is gonna click across the graph at wherever it's telling us, in this case, a negative three. So this would actually be a horizontal line at negative three. It's going across the Y axis and it's horizontal, okay? Remember that this type of line has a zero slope, okay? Notice we don't have anything here that's got uh, something with an X. So that tells us there's a zero slope. You could also think about it being written like this, Y equals zero X minus three. It's kind of redundant to write it like that. That's why we don't. So this is a, another way to show um, a standard form of this special line. These are a little bit different. X equals two, remember they cross the X axis. And so they are those, straight up and down lines, those vertical lines instead of horizontal, and they have an undefined slope. And some people say no slope, which they don't have a slope, but they're undefined. So we have a point here, that's where it's gonna cross, and we have a line that goes straight up and down vertically, and this is an undefined slope. And we write these as X equals whatever they cross. So don't get confused uh, about those. All right, so we're gonna talk about finding slope using standard form. So I told you that there's a way to find slope, but you have to know a little bit more information. So here's our form again, ax plus by equals c. And remember that m is another way that we show what slope is, or just an abbreviation for slope. And to find slope in standard form, there's a special formula. And that formula is negative a over b. So we have to think about what is in the a spot. So the A is always whatever's beside the X. So in this case, it's three, but we have to turn that into a negative three. So for this example, our M would be A, A's value is three, but we're gonna make it a negative three over B. Well, B is right here, and you have to take the sign with it, four. So our slope for this is negative three fourths. 
if we would find the x and y intercept, we would find what they were, and then we would be able to check on a graph to see if that's the right slope. So if we look back at this very first problem, A, this is the one we did do, and we've already graphed it, we can look, we know this is a negative, so we know that's right, and we had one, two, three, and we had one, two, three, four, so our rise is three over four, this is our slope. So we can find it just as quick with our formula of negative A over B, and that's what we found. For this one, we'll try this one. We want slope is equal to negative A over B. A is five, and right now it's positive, so we're gonna put as a negative five, the negative's part of the formula, and then B is two, so our slope is negative five halves. All right, let's see if you can do C. Now, when I plug this one in, notice I got a negative over a negative. I simplified those cancel out each other. So I got two six, and I wanna simplify that down to one third. So my slope for this standard form equation, linear equation, is one third. Now, we worked a little bit with um, changing, um, solving for y's. So we're gonna talk about changing an equation from one form to another. So the form that we're starting with, we haven't talked explicitly about, but we will, um, is slope-intercept form. Remember, we can see our slope, we can see our y-intercept, and this is in slope-intercept form. We want to be able to change this to standard form. And one of the things we have to remember is we do not want fractions when we have things in standard form. It's very formal, it's gotta be uptight and perfect. And we want A to be positive, and we like to put A first. So remember, A is whatever's with X, um, and whatever was with Y is the B, and then our constant is here. Now, we can't just kind of move things around. We have to do this um, kind of precisely because of the signs. So we're just going to get the X on the same side as the Y. So we would say plus 4X, plus 4X, and we would end up with 4X plus Y because there's no sign there in front of Y at all, no sign, so we know it's a positive, and equals our negative three. Now, if we look, do we see any fractions? Nope, so we're good there. Is A positive? Yep, it's right in front of X. So this is standard form of this line. If we graph them, they're gonna look exactly the same. It's just in different um, forms. So it's kinda like seeing a dollar, it's still worth a dollar, and seeing four quarters, it's still worth a dollar, but they look very different. So these are the same thing. Same line, just look different. So we're gonna try this one. We're going to move over. Remember, this is an equation. We're gonna get the x over, because we wanna go into this form. So we need the x over, so minus two x, minus two x, so we have a negative two x plus y equals five. All right, do we have any fractions? No. Is our a positive? Uh-oh, it's not. There's a negative in front of it. So to get rid of that negative, we're gonna multiply the whole equation by negative one. What that does is change every, every sign, so we end up with two x minus y equals a negative five. Make sure you touch and distribute each one. So this is my final answer, the same equation written in standard form. And then from here, I could find the slope as well if I needed to. All right. Pause the video and try um, C and D. All right, for C, the answer is 3x minus y equals 4. And for D, I stopped short of the final answer. Notice that I have a fraction in this problem. So remember, earlier in the year, we learned how to clear fractions. So we're going to go ahead and clear this fraction. Also notice that I have a negative as my A. I have a fraction and a negative. So instead of clearing it and then multiplying by a negative 1, I can do it all at one time. So I look at my denominator, my denominator is a two, so I'm gonna multiply the whole thing by a negative two. So two can go into two one time, and I, it's a negative one, so a negative one times a negative three gives me a three. Then this becomes a negative two y, and the last problem, or the last piece, the c, is a negative two times two, so it becomes a negative four. So now, today you learned about the standard form. You learned how to find x and y intercepts and use them to graph. You've also learned how to change them from slope-intercept form to standard form. 
and you've also learned a new way to find slope when it's in standard form. It's a lot of new information, so you're going to get a chance to practice.